It was the love they had for their horses that Joy O'Neill credits for bringing her own family closer together. Her experience with these majestic animals inspired her to explore the growing field of animal-assisted therapy. And in 2012, she founded the Red Barn Organization, where those in need are finding a kind of sanctuary riding high in the saddle. Jade Randolph has the story. For over seven years, the Red Barn Organization has been using animal-assisted therapy to not only help their students with the disabilities they face, but to heal hearts as well. Joy O'Neill founded the organization in 2012 to give back to those in need. Having raised five children around horses, she has seen the benefits of this interaction firsthand. Today, Joy's goal is to ensure that every single child that visits the Red Barn has the same quality of services as her own family. We wanted it to be absolutely A plus, first class, the best that you could have, the same as any parent wants for their child. And so we op when we started in 2012, that's kind of how we, we operated and that's what we provided all the way up until 2017. In 2017, when Joy's granddaughter was born with spina bifida, her perspective shifted. Now, she had the opportunity to help her granddaughter the same way she was helping others. I just think it just shows how God brings everything around full circle in your life. That what we started out wanting to serve other people, to give them the same services that we would have offered our own children, and now we're able to see our grandchild who has special needs herself and to be able to give her the exact same quality of service that we are giving a child that lives in very low income, even at maybe at the poverty level, that has a developmental delay, that has had circumstances that um, are just really, have created a lot of trauma and um, unrest in their life. There are a variety of classes and programs offered at the Red Barn for a wide range of needs. With a facility that covers almost 33 acres, there is plenty of room to hold multiple sessions at a time. We have programs for veterans and their families. And what's really great about our veterans program is we meet that family where they are. And so if we meet a veteran that comes to us and he or she wants to work with horses themselves, then we can customize that experience based on where they are in their life and in their needs and, and what they want to do with us. But we also serve their children. So their children qualify for any of those programs that we offer, whether it's a class where they get to learn social skills and job skills or um, riding lessons where they get to learn how to, how to actually ride a horse. The students at the Red Barn also have other responsibilities to tend to while at the barn. From mucking stalls to brushing horses, there's always work to do, which everyone chips in to complete. She gets a sense of responsibility. I love coming here and she's responsible for her horse. She gets a sense of camaraderie because there are other people that are like her that come here. Classes at the Red Barn come at no cost for about 90% of its students thanks to donations and scholarships. But as important as these contributions are, volunteers are always needed. People can also donate their time and that really also helps us to be able to do what we do and to keep it affordable to be able to offer is with the volunteers. Every single riding lesson that we teach usually has anywhere between two and three volunteers participating in it to help make that lesson happen. Um, and then there's just, you know, for folks that can be able to advocate for us and, and tell others about us and help us make connections with great people that will help us spread the word so that we can serve as many children as possible. For Simply Southern, I'm Jade Randolph. To learn more about all the programs the Red Barn offers or ways you can get involved, just go online to theredbarn.org. Still ahead on Simply Southern today, how about a trip to the lake to, you know, see the farm animals? Wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, and closed toed shoes. Don't be ticked. Use repellents with 20% DEET on skin and 0.5% permethrin on gear and clothing. Don't be ticked. Avoid sitting on rotten logs or stumps. Don't be ticked.
protect yourself from serious tick-borne illnesses, and seek timely treatment to prevent long-term problems. No hunters were angered in the making of this film. And now, an Alabama tourism spotlight from Sweet Home, Alabama. Helen Keller's childhood home, Ivy Green in Tuscumbia, stands as a tribute to this remarkable woman's life. Inside the 1820 white clapboard home, you'll find a slew of mementos from Keller's life. The museum welcomes more than 35,000 visitors annually to its collections of furniture, photographs, and the famous water pump. That's where seven-year-old Keller had a breakthrough as her teacher, Ann Sullivan, signed the word water into her hand. Every summer, community actors perform the play The Miracle Worker at this historic home. For your next adventure, go online to alabama.travel. We've been raising fish for 33 years. Our farm and the catfish farms in Hale County, in this area, have had a huge impact on the labor, offering jobs. It's been a big economic boom for West Alabama. Our family is fully invested in U.S. farm-raised catfish.